There are many examples that come naturally to mind uh, in the field of computer and communication systems. In fact, performance evaluation and performance of a system is very often one of the criteria uh, that are of primary importance to choose or to validate a system. Um, for example, assuming you're developing an app, an application for a web phone, uh, you are certainly interested in the battery drain with your application running. How long will the web form uh, be able to live on its battery? That is uh, an example of a battery of a performance question. Uh, if you are designing, let's let's take the the other end of the spectrum. You're designing software for reliable computing in a server farm. You want that whatever happens in your server farm, if one machine goes down, the computation goes on and gives correct answers. So you will implement uh, consensus protocols. There are many ways to do that. Some are efficient, some are less efficient. It's not always clear. So you want to measure things or evaluate things like the use of computing resources, the energy cost in terms of consumed electrical power, and the delay uh, to responses of various options. So should performance evaluation be the job of a performance evaluation specialist or should it be part of the toolkit that every engineer in electrical engineer or, com or uh, computer science has? Um, this is a disputed question, but I, I th certainly vote for the second. Um, the reason is it depends on the scale of the project. I mean, if you're building a huge information system or a telecom network, perhaps you can and you will have a number of specialists in the performance evaluation of your system. But there are also many, many cases where you develop your system, you have six months, one year, two years perhaps to do it, and you cannot afford to have uh, someone else do it on the side. Now, the good news is that most of the difficult work is uh, can be done by the person itself. You don't need to have extremely sophisticated mathematics. You do need to learn and master a number of things. Uh, perhaps the most important ones are uh, basic and sound statistics. You need to do statistics in a way which is efficient. For example, you done a lot of measurements or simulation results, you want to present what you have obtained, you want to show it in a way that's meaningful and efficient by summarizing the data, not flooding people with uh, tons of numbers, but also uh, in a way that's ethical. Ethical means that you're really conveying the right information and an information that statisticians would agree is the right way to do it, as opposed to a way that you have engineered to make your numbers look nicer. So we'll go in the book through the, uh, the different techniques and tools and what are the standard ways. Also, what are the different uh, traps that one may fall into? And um, those are things like uh, the sampling methods. There is usually not a unique way to define a performance metric, but the way you define it may depend on how you measure it. For example, assume you are uh, trying to quantify uh, the quality of service of a cellular network. You might say in 95% of the time, or 95% of the area that I'm covering, there is never call blocking. Is it the same as saying that 95% of my customers never experience call blocking? It is not usually. Those are different sampling methods. We will see in general what's the math behind the different sampling methods, what's the way to decide which one is the good one, and also how can you uh, detect which sampling method has been used and how can you map the values of merit computed with one method to another one.